Hello there, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com and in this video we'll be answering a reader's request on how to simulate longer exposures with running water. Now for our starting image I've gone over to Stock Exchange and found this image called Waterfall uploaded by Robert Linder or username Linda6580. Thank you very much for sharing Robert. Now we can see from the EXIF data here that Robert's used a Canon PowerShot G9 at 1 400th of a second. So very quick indeed. And it's frozen the water in place. So it's an ideal candidate for us to try out our longer exposure technique. Okay, let's jump over to Photoshop where you can see I've already got the image loaded on its own layer. And I'm going to copy that layer onto a new layer. So Control J is usually what we'd do. But we're going to throw an Alt in there as well. So Control Alt J to copy the layer and to also be able to name it on the fly. And I'm going to call this one Waterfall. And then I'm going to Control Alt J that again and call this one Pool. Because those are the two areas that we really need to work on, the pool and the waterfall. Okay, let's close off the pool one first and work on waterfall. Now we want this one to be a straight kind of up and down blur as it goes through the air. And to do this, we're going to use motion blur. So filter, blur, and then motion blur. Kind of makes sense, it's a logical thing to use. And you can see that I've already got this set to minus 90, which is straight up and down, and a distance of 90 pixels as well. Now, depending on how far you take this slider, is how long the exposure is really, if you want to look at it in those terms. A very short exposure down at the bottom. And then as we go increasingly up. Now I'm going to leave this about 90. I'm just going to type that in because that's where I found that this works better for this particular image. And I'm going to click OK. Now I need a mask to mask out everything else. So it's going to start off with a black mask and then we're going to paint in where we want to see because there's less that we want to see than we don't want to see. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm going to press Alt again and then click on the new layer mask icon down the bottom of the layer palette. And that gives me a black mask, which then I can paint on white where I want the effect to show. OK, so I'm just going to paint in here. Now I'm going to very quickly paint in the masks here. Obviously, if I was doing this without recording it, I'd maybe take a little bit longer. But for the purpose of this, you don't really want to sit here and listen to me waffle while I concentrate on doing this. There we go. I'm also using a mouse, which doesn't make it the most accurate. OK, there we are. We've got our waterfall in there. Now, if we want to bring back a little bit of the original texture, we can reduce the opacity of that. So we're going to take the opacity down to about 70-ish percent, perhaps. And there we are. So there's the after and the before and after. So we've got this nice, longer exposure. Now, with the pool, if we click on that layer and make that active. Now, obviously, we've gone over the top of what we've just done, but let's not worry about that just at the moment. We're going to bring that back again in a little while. OK, so we're going to do the pool. Now, this one doesn't want a motion blur because it's not moving very quickly. The, uh, the smoothness that we get in the pool is more from the ripples and bubbles and all that kind of thing. So we need a different kind of blur, and this one is a surface blur. So let's go to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Now you can have a good old play around with these figures. I've come up with a couple on this one um, of either a 10 and 150 like we see here. But I also liked if I put in 20 and 185. I also quite like that as well. Um, but I think maybe that's just a little bit too much. Control Z to take that back. Uh, filter blur surface blur and I'm going to go back to my 10 and 150 which is a little little bit more subtle but I have a play around with those depending on which uh, image you're using and what the resolution is I'm going to click OK and once again press alt and create new layer mask to bring up a black layer mask and once again I'm going to paint on white where we want to see the effect now this one is a little bit more tricky because there's bits in the water, but there's also leaves as well. Obviously, if I wasn't making a video, I would try much harder not to get the leaves in the blur, which would be a bit more realistic. Let's just go around these for now. Oh, and then press X to go into a black brush just to bring them back a bit. Okay, not making a very good job, but you're getting 
the idea of what I'm trying to do. Obviously, a little bit longer and uh, I'd be able to, to mask that a little bit better. I'm going to press X and just bring that one up, X. So I'm painting in black just to get rid of our mask there. OK, and there we are. And once again, we can bring down the opacity of that, that layer so we can see some of the underlying textures if we wish. But I don't want too much. Let's go about 80-ish on this one. OK, so let's have a look at our before. Quite a quick shot. And then after we've blurred it up a bit. In fact, I might even blur that one a bit more, bring the opacity up a little bit, a bit more than that, maybe that one up to 80-ish. And there we have it. How to simulate a longer exposure when photographing water. I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. Thanks for bearing with me.